students, I'd like to talk a little bit about the autonomic nervous system. And in the autonomic nervous system, similar to automatic pilot or uh, pilots, um, we have the autonomic nervous system in the body. It functions without us having to think. Okay? Good thing, because our body is so complex that we could not handle it if we had to make all the decisions it makes in a second, if you will. First of all, automatic nervous system, also called the visceral nervous system, and uh, I'd like this de uh, definition, if you will, or this thought, the dynamic nature of life is too complicated to have a conscious, voluntary response. It requires a genetic, predetermined system to assess and respond to the changing environment, homeostasis. Okay? In order for us to keep ourselves alive and healthy in a constantly changing internal and external environment, we have to have a system that is super intelligent, programmed to keep us alive. That's the autonomic nervous system. Divided into two parts. One, we have is a sympathetic nervous system. That's when we're in emergency mode, okay? And then we have the parasympathetic when we're not in emergency mode. Some consider this one rest and digest. Let me go on and just go on some other topics here. I'm going to go a little bit fast to see if we can follow. Sympathetic nervous system might consider as four different highways, four areas of specificity. Beta 1, beta 2, alpha 1, alpha 2. Beta 1, heart, pretty much. Uh, beta 2, lungs, two lungs, there you go. Alpha 1, um, heart is a, a uh, basal um, constriction. All right, it deals with the blood pressure. And this is going to be, alpha 2 is a little unusual. It works a little different. When it works, actually, if um, you want to know, I love that you go down. It's an interesting fact. I can see this rabbit, 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 turtle. Uh, no. Okay. With that in mind, adrenergic based on the uh, neurotransmitters, epinephrine or norepinephrine, adrenaline or noradrenaline. Collect, uh, these are the same thing, there's different names, and collectively they're called catecholamines. Catecholamines. Yeah? So, whatever textbook you're reading, hey, they may use this term, this term, whatever. Be ready for any. Uh, why would the sympathetic nervous system kick in? I'll tell you why. You're in a state of emergency. Okay? There's a threat. With that in mind, what can we expect the body to do? This is very predictable. Alright, so, uh, eyes become dilated. Pupils are dilated. The mouth, dry, sticky saliva. Uh, lungs, now, here we got an improvement. Bronchodilation, maximum airflow. Alright? The, the lungs, if you will, open up, get a lot of oxygen in there. Moving on, the heart, day one territory. So, uh, fancy terms here, inotropic, chronotropic, dromotropic. Inotropic basically is this, increased contractility. The heart gives a stronger uh, muscle contraction. Chronotropic, mm. faster. The heart will be faster. And dromotropic basically deals with the electrical velocity is on the EKG. It gives it uh, a stronger one, if you will. Either or, what this is going to boil down to is increased cardiac output, more perfusion, the blood getting around to where it needs to go when you're in a state of emergency. All right, uh, pulse rate, blood pressure up, GI, relaxation. You don't need to digest the food at that point when you're in a state of emergency. All right, it's a priority system. Bladder, um, detrusters, which help us void, the, 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 they contract, they help us expel our urine. Well, guess what? No, pretty much no activity there. And uh, the uterus, when the sympathetic nervous system kicks in, the uterine contractions are diminished. And it's used as a tropolytic to stop urinary, uh, urinary contractions. All right, liver, glycogenolysis, um, the release of uh, stored glycogen. Um, glycogen in the liver stores glucose, and uh, a little bit of epinephrine starts to break down, makes available sugar, sugar availability, and vasculature is a constriction. Sympathetic nervous system. Now, take a look here. Here you got it. glucose availability, a lot of oxygen, and a fast heart, and a lot of cardiac output. You're making plenty of blood available to the skeletal muscles, and uh, the, the quality of the blood is going to have glucose in it, it's going to have oxygen. So, once that stuff makes its way into the mitochondria, you're going to make a lot of ATP, and you're going to have a lot of energy available to perhaps save your life. There you go. Now, as far as medications with the sympathetic nervous system, you have some 
um, that stimulate, so they copy synthesomimetics, or you have agonists. Agonists means my friend. Or you have something to go against. Antagonists or synthetolytics. Lytics uh, would mean like breaking down, or in this case means opposing the work of the sympathetic nervous system. Moving on, just the opposite. We have the parasympathetic. Some people call it rest and digest. Here you go. Um, it's called cholinergic based on the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. Um, what happens to the eyes? Constriction. Or pupillary constriction. The pupil. A lot of saliva so you can digest your food. Swallow the saliva. Saliva is going to have some enzymes and stuff. Helps you with digestion. Uh, lungs. Not a good friend for breathing, if you will. Actually, bronchial constriction. Narrowing of the airways. Heart. The heart rate slows down. Slows down. Um, and um, just like the uh, vagus nerve when it's stimulated, massage, don't do that. That's uh, Carotid side to stimulate the vagus nerve, slow your heart rate could be dangerous. Or uh, a valsalva maneuver that engages the uh, vagus nerve, which helps kick start the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay. Um, GI, increased motility, that basically means peristalsis speeds up. Okay, helps with digestion. Acid secretion, mm, goes up. Parasympathetic, need acid, digest your food. Hydrochloric acid, we call. Um, and defecation, the increased motility helps you with defecation. Bladder kicks in the detrusor muscles. Good friend of detrusor muscles to get that fit urine output. Okay? Um, medication, parasympathetic meds, what can they be? Cholinergics that um, help this get going, or you can have what? Anticholinergics. Probably the classic one is atropine. Atropine. Okay? Let's go up to an acronym that's very popular called sludge. And you can associate that with the parasympathetic nervous system when it kicks in. Uh, perhaps over kicks in. Increased salivation, yes. L, documentation, tears. Urinary incontinence, huh? maybe too much detrusor activity. Yeah. Uh, diarrhea, maybe too much motility. Yeah. There you go. Gastrointestinal cramps, too much peristalsis, ouch. And then emesis, we call that sludge. A whole bunch of fluid. All right, there you have it, the autonomic nervous system and um, uh, we have, again, I have to say, I'm not a nervous, also called visceral. The dynamic nature of life is too complicated to have a conscious, voluntary response. It requires a genetic, predetermined system to assess and respond to the changing environment. Very bad on your faces. I'll quickly take this up, uh, listeners, and you can probably take a look at it a little bit closer. Uh, a little bit of glare here, but if that helps out. Um, there you have it. And um, here we have, again, sympathetic nervous system, catecholamines, and so on. And uh, meds here. And um, parasympathetic. One of the reasons I consider this a priority is that when we work with medications, the medications work in concert either opposing the work of the autonomic nervous system or helping it work even a little bit better. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for um, listening. <laughs>